The wheels are a fundamental part of your bike and they're the link between you and the road that you're riding on. And they have a tough time dealing with a wide range of forces that occur from braking, accelerating, turning, and even the bumps and holes that you ride through on the road surface. And over time, your wheels can go out of true or develop a buckle. But don't worry though, because in this video, we're gonna show you how to get your wheels running true in no time at all. The process of truing a wheel can seem like a bit of a daunting task, but follow the steps in this video and I'm sure you'll get it done in no time at all and it might even save you a trip to the bike shop. To true your wheel, you are gonna need a few tools to enable you to do the job properly. And we're gonna use a wheel stand like we've got here today, but you don't have to have that. You can just use your bike and keep the wheel in its place or use anything that you can support the wheeling correctly. As well as this, you're also gonna need a spoke key that fits the relevant wheels that you've got. And if you've got bladed spokes like this wheel has, you are gonna need a bladed spoke holder or seeing as we haven't got one today, you can improvise and use an adjustable spanner like this and just hold the spoke in place nice and straight. With a wide range of wheels out there, it's worth taking the time beforehand to research what kind of spokes and spoke nipples your wheel has to make sure that you've got the correct tool to get the job done. Otherwise, you could find yourself struggling by not using the correct tools and doing a pretty poor job at it. Some wheels also, particularly aero wheels, tend to feature hidden spoke nipples where the spoke nipple wheel is hidden inside the rim and to gain access to those, you're gonna to have to remove your tires and the rim tape too and access that from the inside of the wheel. But the wheel we're using today, you can see has got external spoke nipples. So we've got nice, easy access to gain those and then carry on with the job. With the wheel removed from the bike, it's a fairly simple process of attaching the wheel into the true-in stand. And the wheel we've got today, we'll just use this through axle adapter. So we'll slide that in and we'll slide the other part on. And then once you've got the wheel into the true-in stand, you can then start to assess and find where the buckled area of the wheel is. Or if you don't have a true in stand, like I mentioned earlier, you can just drop your wheel back into the bike and use that as a bit of a stand itself and follow the same true in process. One of the first steps we need to do is to set the true in stand correctly so that we can use it to accurately see where the wheel is buckled. So one of the first things we need to do is move the part here so it sits up a little bit closer to where the edge of the wheel rim is. And the next step is to adjust this to make these calipers come in nice and close to the rim surface so that when we spin the wheel, we can use these as our reference points to be able to see where the wheel is buckled. And by spinning it round, moving these in closer until like that, they make contact. You can see here, it's where the wheel starts to make contact with this. So we know that the buckled area is around here. So that's the area we need to start to work on next and assess what we need to do. Having identified the area of the wheel that has got the buckled piece, we can then look to check that the spokes in that area aren't damaged or particularly loose already. We can also check that the rim is not damaged as well because if there's any of these components that need replacing, we're gonna to have to go ahead and replace those before we can try and make the wheel true. Otherwise, we're gonna be chasing it round and round and really gonna to struggle to make it perfect. Now that we've got this area identified on the wheel, it's where we can start to take our spoke key and actually make some adjustments to the spoke tension to try and reduce this buckle and move the rim back across in line to where it needs to be to make the wheel perfectly true again. And what we're gonna to need to do, as I said, is starting at this area, identify the start point of where the buckle is, which is around this area here. So we're gonna be looking at this spoke first, and then we need to assess which direction we need to move the wheel rim across to make it true. So when I'm looking at this here, I can see that the rim needs to move across to um, this side here, so the braking surface side, if this is a disc brake wheel. Um, so what we're gonna need to do is use this side of the spokes that attach to this side of the hub, and then we're gonna have to add some tension to this spoke to enable it to pull the rim across in line to where we want it to be. And it's important to remember when we're adding spoke tension to one side of the wheel that we need to also remove a little bit of tension from the opposite side so that we don't add a whole load of tension into the wheel which could result in uneven spoke tension throughout the wheel and a, and a wheel that would well buckle very easily and not be ideal for what you need. So it's also important to work in sort of even amounts on this wheel. So we're trying to use the spoke area here where our buckle is, one second there. So we're trying to work on pairs is quite often a common phrase used in true in a wheel. You work on a pair of spokes at a time and then assess the wheel as you go in, only making small changes to make sure you don't do anything that you don't need to do. 
To add and remove tension to the spokes, you're gonna to need to turn the spoke nipple itself. And this works because it's got a threaded interface between the spoke and the spoke nipple itself. By turning the spoke nipple anti-clockwise, you can reduce the tension on the spoke. And by turning the spoke nipple clockwise, you can add tension to that spoke. And by adding tension, you're gonna move the wheel rim across to the side where the spoke attaches to the hub. So now that you've got a basic understanding of the principles of the spokes and how adjusting them will true the wheel, we can go in with our spoke nipple key and start making some adjustments, making sure that we regularly check our progress to see how straight we're getting the wheel to make sure we don't do any unnecessary changes. So we can go in here, find our first buckled area. Is there, use this to keep the spokes straight. We'll start here, hold that straight. Because this side needs to move across, I'm gonna add some tension to this side, turning this clockwise, let's say, and then opposite side, remove some tension. It's a bit of a trial and error process and any adjustments you make should be done in small stages at a time over this area that we've identified as the buckled area. And it's a good process to use a quarter to half a turn on each spoke nipple at a time and then check your progress as you go. Having made the necessary adjustments to your wheel, it should just be a case of a final check over to make sure that you're happy with everything and the wheel is running nice and true. And then you can remove the wheel from the truing stand, refit your tire that you removed earlier, and then reinstall the wheel onto the bike. And it's important to know that if you are struggling to get that wheel nice and true, it could be caused by a different reason that you're not too sure of. So it might be worth heading down to your local bike shop and getting them to give the wheel a once over just for peace of mind to make sure you're not riding any dangerous equipment. So there you have it, how to fix a buckled wheel at home, enabling you to spend more time riding your bike and having fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, get them down in the comments section down below. Thanks very much, see you later.